Hi, good morning. Welcome to Friday, March 8th, 2019. And I am live this morning and I hope that everyone is doing well. And I look forward to our few minutes together and what the Lord has put on my heart to share with you. First of all, I want to start with prayer and we'll start there. Dear God, I come to you covered in your son's blood in Jesus' name, and I praise you in your holy. I thank you, God, for times that we can share your word, your history, your love, your purpose, your mission for us. I pray, God, that as your word says, when two or more are gathered together, you are there. I pray that the hearts of those who are listening, that the soil of their heart is fertile. I pray, God, that this word will go forth. I pray, God, that you will use me and speak to, to me with the same word. I pray, God, that you will motivate those who are listening. I pray, God, that you will charge us with a full charge of what it means to be set apart for you, for your mission and your pur purpose in this season. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah. First of all, can someone please share this over to the Holy Nation page? Um, if you could just click on or send me a message that you did that and um, I'll see it. Uh, unfortunately, the um, the way Facebook is set up, it's not letting me do it the way I want to do it when I come on live. So if someone will do that and then say a message that you did it, um, and I'll know it's over there in that group. Just share it. First of all, share this, if you don't mind, on your wall as well. Um, but if someone could put it over on Holy Nation. And when I see that, I am ready to go. So I'm seeing some little messages there. Um, it's hard to see because I'm using my phone now. Okay, well, I'm just going to trust that it's getting shared over to Holy Nation. Okay, good morning. Hope everybody is good. And the Lord has really put this message upon me about what it means to be set apart. You know, there's a lot of clubs in the Christian journey. Churches, study groups women's groups, men's groups, activities, bikers for Christ, um, and I'm not picking them out, but I'm just giving titles. Um, one day I made a joke, you know, knitters for Jesus. You know, it could be whatever group it is. If it's on Facebook, if it's online, if it's uh, within your own congregation of where you live, there's a lot of these clubs. And I'm, the reason why I'm giving them club, the word club is this. We are trying really hard to engage and connect in relationships with people. Um, I think the churches, the clubs are missing that some. Well, that's obvious because there's a lot of loneliness and um, people feeling disconnected, even though they're in a church, even though they're within a group. And so there's a lot of that disconnect. So there's the searching for the connection but yet there's the misconnection. But we've got all these groups around. I mean, you could probably go somewhere right now this morning. You, you're on online with me. And this is a group, I guess you could say, because we're together right now. And then there's other groups around. But what really are we accomplishing? And I said this the other day. I want you to imagine that you are, let's just say it's a football team. You're a football player. And for years, you go and you learn about football. You go and you dress in your uniform for football. You discuss the rule book. You know the rules of the football game. Then you learn and memorize the plays of the football game, the secret plays, you know, that the team's going to do. And you can memorize that and you can quote it and you meet every day, once a week, and you meet and you discuss the rules of the football game. You discuss the plays of the team for the football game. You put on the uniform. You discuss the leather ball. You discuss who made the leather. You discuss the history of the leather. You know who made it and the design and the measurements of the football. But this is my thing. When have you actually played the game? How many years have we been going to church, going to our clubs, Going to our groups, discussing it, quoting it, memorizing it, sharing it with like-minded ballplayers, like-minded believers. But when did you get in the game? How many people, and this is a really serious question, how many people 
did you bring to Christ last year? 2018, do you have it written down? Oh, but you went to church all those weeks, all those times, all those meetings. But what's happening with us that we're not making the impact on the outside? Oh, we're making an impact on the inside and we've got, the, we're trying to make these connections. Some of us have some really great connections. Some of those connections are so strong that they hinder you from doing your assignment. They hinder you from hearing a piece of truth to challenge you to go out and be set apart. And then you share it, and then all of a sudden, where'd she come from? Where did he come from? What's his story? What's his covering? What's his anointing? I think he was prideful. I think she is deceitful. And suddenly, you're being pulled away from that call that you felt, that charge that came forth. And I had a situation this week that happened to me at a particular location. Wonderful group of people shared a message for them, sent to them. Good people. But what happened afterwards was a frenzy of gossip. Really, it sort of devastated me until I kind of got my wits back. But I thought, here it is again. Good people, good-hearted people, but they missed the challenge to them. They missed the word that was given to them to go out, rise up. What's in you? Holy people, it's time. We've got to do something. But instead, I'm not sure this is of the Lord. I'm not sure. Oh, I heard this. The words of a gossip are like a choice morsel. They go down to a man's innermost part. The words of a gossip separate close friends. Gossip, destructive, deadly, deceitful, dangerous. So without meaning, you have this conversation of concern. I just have concern. I just want to encourage you to have caution. Suddenly, the seed that you received with joy gets choked out. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Off you go. And you stay comfortable in your little club, your little group. But what are you doing? So let me explain to you about being set apart. The Lord gave me, it's funny, a part is an A. But let me tell you the journey of being set apart. If you read in Matthew 10, I call that the charge to the, to the apostles. He says, instead of me summarizing, I'm going to just sort of read the word. Um, let's see. And you are to go, okay, he's telling them to leave and to go preach. And you are to go and preach this message. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is near. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. Huh. Don't peddle the word of God for profit. Hmm. Yeah. People that are selling everything. Selling. Oh, I don't want to go there. Okay. Freely you have received. Freely give. Do not take any gold or silver or copper in your belts. Take no bag for the journey or extra tunic or sandals or a staff, for the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search for somewhat worthy person and stay in his house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest in there. If it is not, let your peace return with you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave their home, that hometown. I tell you the truth, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on that day of judgment than for that town. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in their synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before the governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, don't worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of the Father speaking through you. 
brother will betray brother and father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. I'm going to give you an example of how I receive that charge. I call it the charge. Let's say I want to go and stand across the street, let's just say an abortion clinic, or let's say uh, a strip club. Let's just something sinful, that kind of stereotype. And I stand on the corner and I say, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. Don't, don't go in there. Don't go in there, honey. Sweetie, uh, no, no, no. C -c I want to talk to you. God has a message for you. He loves you. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, repent. Okay? He's telling everyone to repent. So they go inside and all of a sudden the owner of the establishment comes out. You know, I've been getting some complaints about you and I just want you to know you're upsetting my pat patrons and I just want you to know I, I really appreciate if you would stop it and I've got to come out and tell you that I don't, don't like you doing it. And they go back in. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. Don't go in there. Uh, repent. Repent. Then they come out and said, I told you. I'm going to have to call the police. You're not to say another word. And don't you cross that line right there. And they go back in. And you stand back up. The kingdom of God is at hand. Okay, so the police come. The police come to you and pull up. Miss Chadwell, I've got a call. They've been complaining. You know this disrupts business, and you're not allowed to do this, and we're going to warn you. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> we're going to warn you. We don't want to have to come back here. This needs to stop. You need to go home. And they pull off. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's near. Repent. Repent. C come talk to me. I have the answer for you. Those of you who are lost and sinning, the kingdom of God is at hand. The police come back. But I told you, I told you if I got another call, I was going to have to take you to jail. I'm sorry. Put your hands behind your back. <clears throat> Get put in the police car. <clears throat> Get taken to jail. You go to jail, spend a night, however long, a few hours, and you go before the judge. Judge looking at the paperwork. You know, Miss Chadwell, you don't have a record. And, uh, you know, I have been hearing some things, but I want to tell you, you can't do that. And I'm sorry that they brought you in here, but I want to let you know, I'm going to give you a warning this time. I'm going to give you a warning. But if you come back into my courtroom, I'm going to have to give you 30 days in jail. 90 days, whatever, let's say 30 days. You know, I don't, you don't have a record here, so I'm just going to have to warn you. You're not allowed to do that. You can't disrupt business, and I don't want to see you in my courtroom again. Go out in my shackles, okay? All right, and you go back and you change, and you get released. I go right back to that corner. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's near. Repent, repent, repent. They call. The police are not so nice. Slap the cuffs on me. Take me to jail. Get hauled in front of the judge. Didn't I tell you? Did I not warn you? Did I tell you not to come back in my courtroom? I want to tell you, tick, I'm going to give you 30 days to teach your lesson. On and on it goes. That's what it means to be set apart. That's what Matthew 10 means. And you know what? We're not doing it. You know why we're not doing it? We don't want to go to jail. We don't want to be arrested. We don't want to be criticized. We don't want to be talked about. We don't want to be rejected. So we stay in our little comfort room and our comfort clubs and our comfort gatherings and we discuss the rule books and the quote books and, uh, Messages about the game and great players of the game. And we can, oh, that was a great message. Oh, that was great. But we don't do anything when we go home. We're not changing and impacting anyone. You know why? Because there's a price to pay when you make the impact. So this is what being set apart means. Actually, I want to share another scripture. Okay. Hebrews 11 is known as the Great Hall of Faith. It's all of the great warriors of the faith are listed. And if you look at my Bible, if I can share it with the camera. I don't know if you can see it. It's hard to see with all the people giving me messages, but I have it circled 
and circled and circled. You know, by faith Isaac, da da da. By faith Joseph, da da. By faith Moses. Um, by faith the people passed through the Red Sea. I gave a lesson on that last week. By faith the walls of Jericho. By faith the prostitute Rahab. Okay, then I'm going to read this. I'm going to tell you what being set apart means. And what more shall I say? I don't have the time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jep. Japheth, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned into strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, while others were chained and put in prison. They, now listen to this. They were stoned. They were sawed in two. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskin and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves, and they lived in caves and holes in the ground. They lived in caves and holes in the ground. They were all commended for their faith. This is interesting. Yet none of them received what they had been promised. They didn't even get it, but they lived by their faith. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Okay. You want to be sawed in two? You want to be stoned? You want to put in prison? You want to be flogged? You want to be rejected? We don't want that because we're so in love with ourselves and so in love with the comforts of this world that we are unwilling to step out. Because let me tell you what being set apart means. This is the price you pay. You will be abandoned. You will be accused. You will be alienated. People will accuse you. This happened this week to me again. Again. Totally false. Just talk. Gossip. Missing the fact of a word that was living and breathing for them, for us. But we're just going to reject it. We're just going to say, huh. Because you know what? That rising up, that holy charge within us to be different, to stand up, to speak up, to change and make an impact means we've got to step away from the group. That's the risk and that's what's holding everybody back. You want to have everyone's opinion to be good of you. The word says, woe to the one who's got all praise for him. And it says also, there's a scripture that says, the prophets, their names were considered evil. That would be like saying, okay, Kim Chadwell's from the devil. She is evil. She is from the devil. She's from the pit of hell. <coughs> Stay away from her. Danger, danger, danger. And people, if they're not careful, will listen to that. Because they're not listening to their own spirit within them rising up. Okay, so their names were considered evil. They weren't invited to the family reunions. They weren't talked to and included at the church events. They were considered evil, rejected, alienated, accused. It's hard. It's a hard journey to set yourself apart. It's a hard journey to say, I'm going to do it. It's not an easy journey. Nowhere does it say that the rugged road is a road of smooth sailing. But let me tell you, it's the most blessed road. Your faith will grow. You will become so in tune with the Father because that's all you're going to have. You're only going to have your faith and your word, his word and your prayer time with him. That's what you're going to have. And you're going to find your sea legs. And suddenly he said, don't worry about what to say. I'm going to give you the words. Don't worry, I'm going to be with you. Don't worry about money. I'll provide for you. All these people selling trinkets and yeah, it is very strong in my heart. Do not sell the word of God or peddle the word of God for profit. Churches, 
speakers, setting up tables and selling and selling and selling by the money changers in the churches, missing it, not trusting the Lord will provide. The Lord will give. He feeds the birds. He feeds the lilies of the field. You don't think he's going to feed you? You don't think that if you stand up at your job when they say you're not allowed to, you don't think he's going to take care of you if you lose your job? That's why no one's speaking up. Yeah, I don't want to lose my job. You know, this logic, you know, I, I'm the provider. I, I, I have to be careful. Oh, we have to obey those in authority. Oh, we have to, you know, God put those rulers in government. All this mistwisting of scripture. And I said this the other day. Don't ever, ever forget that Satan tempted Jesus with scripture. He knows the word. He's going to try and manipulate the word to you so that you step in a different direction, so that you get pulled away from something you were feeling, something you thought you were supposed to do. When you were ready to take that risk, you were ready to take that stand, and suddenly, oh, that's right, I am the provider. Um, okay, I'm not going to make waves at my job. Oh, that's right, you know, I do need to submit. Nowhere does it say you have to submit to evil. Nowhere does it say that you are to obey evil. It says to love your neighbor. Tell me where it says to toy with your neighbor's sin. Tell me where it says bring that sin into your home. Holiness. The Lord showed me in this last week. I'm going to tell you who the sheep and the goats are. Believers and holy people. It's no longer about believers. Even the demons believe and shudder. It's not about if you believe. It's such a good title. Oh, the believers. I've used that word. The believers. Believers. The believers are the ones that are rejecting going out. And you think it's not happening? Where are all these church people? Where are these mega churches in the week and at other serious, serious things going on in our world? Oh, but they meet at a certain time every day, every every. Sunday, all the crowds big. They've got parking attendants. They got the screens. They got the people saying welcome. And you've got the oh, the Lord gave me this this week. I'm gonna read this. Hope I've still got it marked. This one jumped off the page to me. Okay, I've been reading the Word nonstop since the beginning of the fast. I have not stopped. That's all I'm reading, and I'm reading it completely in order. Um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 1 Kings, 1 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Yeah, I really do know the books of the Bible in order. Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Isaiah Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Okay, I finished it. Okay, so in Joshua... I was reading, and it was just a small little sentence, and it jumped off the page to me. So, okay, so the children of Israel had been going to take the land and had victory after victory after victory, okay? And then all of a sudden, they completely lost. It was horrible. And then Josh was on the floor. He, he's devastated. He gets on the floor, and he's praying. It's like, God, what happened? Why would you not be with us? How did we lose all these people? This is what God said. He said, stand up. What are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the, devo the devoted things they have stolen. They have lied. They have put them into their own possessions. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their back and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you in anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. Go consecrate the people. Tell them, da, da, da. Okay, well, I'll just say, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, that which is devoted among you, O Israel, you cannot stand against your enemies until you remove it. That's, tell you what jumped off the page. Stand up. What are you doing down on your face? Do you know how many people, I'm just going to throw the Bible. Do you know how many people laying on the ground Oh, weeping before the Lord. Whoops. Weeping before the Lord. And the sin is in their lives. 
in their homes, in their families, in their churches. Oh, but you're going to weep on the floor and you're going to sob until you hear from God. You're going to get on the floor in the church, church services and get up with tingles and wipe your eyes. Oh, it was a great moment. Was it? Was it? Get the sin out of your life. Then God's going to hear you. Get the sin out of this country. Then God is going to hear us. We can get on our face all day long. And until we get the sin out, he's going to say, get up. What are you doing on the floor? Get the sin out. Do we have the courage as holy people? I'm not talking about believers anymore. Do we have the courage as holy people to get the sin out? To call sin, sin. Yeah, to people that we have circled with and our club members with, and sing songs with, and hold hands and pray with? Are we just going to still talk about the playbook? Are we still just going to tell about the stories of old? And then we're going to get on our face, and we're trying to wonder what's happening. Why isn't there a shift? Why isn't there a change? Why isn't there a healing? Why isn't the, the, the body unified? Because we're not holy. We're not willing to stand up and stand out. And when you go to a group of people like I did this week, and you're zealous and you're happy and you're connecting and joyful, and you give them the charge and say, it's time, holy people. You'll feel it rise up in you. You'll feel it. And they start, some of them start to feel it. And guess what? Guess what? The Bible says that we're in a race. Train yourself like a marathon. Don't quit. Paul in change and in cuffs in a dungeon writing. Don't quit. Don't give up. And guess who trips us in the race? It's not the world. It's our teammates. We grab the ball and we're ready to go. We feel it rise up. We might be a little new at it, but it's something rising up in us. And we grab it and we're ready to go. Uh, what are you doing? Where did you hear that? I'm not sure it's the right time. I'm not sure the anointing is there. Uh, have, you, have you checked into the history? Have, have you found out? On and on it goes. And then they're going to come after you and they're going to accuse you. They're going to alienate you. So much is going to happen to you on this journey. This is a journey of death to self. It's not about your possessions and how blessed you are. Oh no. It's about the price you pay for the one who paid your price. It's about are you willing to stand on the corners and the ones that get laughed at. Ha, ah, look at him over there just talking over there on the street. You know where I used to live, there was a man that had a, um, was that a mega horn? And it was at a certain intersection and would uh, say scripture, had a little microphone and a little speaker that was right by his feet and he would say it. And people around town just sort of knew him and it's funny, I don't remember his name. And they knew of so-and-so at such-and-such -such intersection, sort of a little bit of the laugh of the town in a way. But every time I went through that intersection, I thought to myself, the word of God does not return void. The word that he was putting out and sending forth, it was going to land on somebody. And I always prayed when I heard it for me to receive it. I wasn't taking that risk. What do you think it's like to stand on a corner with a megaphone saying the word of God? Suddenly you become uh, one of those. Well, what's one of those? Someone who took it seriously. Someone who has conviction on their heart. And don't start justifying, well, that's not how you're supposed to do it because you're not supposed to have a crown. Oh, you're supposed to have um, a covering. Who's your covering? I want to know uh, what denomination, what, what uh, version of the Bible are you quoting? Uh, what is it? So there's all these things we start picking. We don't mean to initially, but that's our flesh picking so that we don't have to have the charge rise up in us. Being set apart means we don't look the same. It means we don't talk the same. It means that we don't meet the same way. It means we're not doing it all the same way. 
That's what Jesus, Jesus' problem, who crucified Jesus? The religious people, the church, wasn't the world. They were so put out and offended by him, quoting the word of God. Who does he think he is? Trying to trap him and ask him questions on the Sabbath. Trying to ask him this and what does it mean about this coin? What's it mean about that? What does it mean? And they were constantly trying to get him. That's who beat him up. And Jesus said, remember, if they hate you, remember, they hated me first. If they reject you, remember, they rejected me first. Being set apart means that you are willing to break away with tradition. Being set apart means that you're willing to break away from the crowd. Are you willing to break away from the crowd and start your sprint to the finish line? Just know who's going to trip you. It may be a pastor. It may be someone that has authority. It may be someone that has all kinds of titles. It says in the last days, they will surround themselves with a great number of teachers. They will not put up with sound doctrine. It doesn't say they're going to surround themselves with a bunch of bums. They're going to have people that have titles beside them. They're teachers. They're educated. They know. And they can probably out-tongue and out-quote you with the manipulation of Scripture to where you're like, then you just get so discouraged. And guess what? That's what Satan does. He doesn't take your gifting. He attacks your desire. He attacks you. You're wanting to. Suddenly you just don't want to. I felt that the other day. First time, I honestly felt like I wanted to quit. I was so devastated by the gossip and the unmerited lying gossip. I was, again, shocked. But now I have a box that's called shock. Shock. Throw it over there. More and more shock, people that you think will, won't. But the think, people that you think won't, will. Rise up. This is the thing that I want to say in closing. This day and time, first of all, the Lord gave me this this week. And that is the believers are the goats. And if you feel that you're a believer, make sure that you're holy. And you get the title holy upon you. Because it's another degree. It's not just about believing anymore. It's about whether or not you're holy. Like I said, even the demons, the word says, even the demons believe and they shudder. It's not what you believe. It's if you're holy. Are you living holy? Get the sin out of your home. Get the sin out of your life. Don't let your children be in fornication in your homes. Those of you that are watching me, living in fornication, calling yourself a believer. You're sinning. You're not holy. Get up off the floor. Get the sin out of your life, and then God will hear you. And this is the second thing the Lord showed me this week. Is this. It's no longer about wake up. Christians are very, very smart. It's not about being dumb. Quote scripture Memorize the book, study it, know the stories of old, the great players of the game. It's about opening your eyes. I had no idea. It's so funny. It's what the, the word says, the blindness. The believers are blind. You think you're not blind? Look, open your eyes at what is happening around us, around you. Two states this week, they're teaching kindergartners about transgender and reading storybooks of trying to decide who, which you are, a boy or a girl, in the schools. What's going on? It's all the, the vaccines, the laws. They're squeezing and squeezing until where the holy people have either got to open their eyes or you're going to go right off the cliff and get on the, the little sled with Santa, hey, and right off the cliff you go. Open your eyes. Ask God, God to remove the spiritual blindness off of you. You've got to open your eyes. Take a look at what's going on. Holy people, there's one thing we've got to do. We've got two choices. We're either going to do things the way it's always been, which is what's happening, or we've got to rise up and stand up because the world, the pit is going to be opened and we're going to go right down in it. Judgment is coming to this country 
Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you think that Jesus is going to reach down and pluck us up before any persecution and judgment arrives on this country, don't think that the other Christians around the world can be beheaded and, and imprisoned and all these things happen for their faith, but we just get to sit back and snack on popcorn and Jesus is going to come get us? You think that's fair? The blood of the innocent, the bloodshed, the lesson that I gave last week, the avenger of the blood is coming. The avenger, the redeemer, the savior of the blood, of the innocent, of the murder. And I thought about this. You realize abortion deals with several sins. First of all, 98% of abortions are committed of those who are not married. 2% are those married. So you have 100 women, 98 of them have committed adultery, which means a man has done that with them. So we're dealing with the sin of murder, we're dealing with the sin of adultery. We're dealing with the sin of lying. We're dealing with the sin of covetedness because many in there are married relationship affairs. We're dealing with the lack of respect for the parents because an unmarried woman is under the covering of her father. Should I continue? How many sins are in the little package of abortion? unbelievable we've got to deal with this we've got to repent we've got to do it as a holy people what I've got coming I hope that this weekend I'm going to be finished and in early next week we've got to identify ourselves as a unified holy people a holy nation we've got to have holy stamped upon us we've got to stand up and represent the holy the our holy God we're going to get laughed at. You may get jeered at in your own family. It's going to happen, so be prepared. That's part of the problem. I don't think the churches are preparing the people for what it's really like to rise up and represent Christ. You know, way back, and I will close. I'm not sure how long I've gone. Way back, years back in China, when um, the communists made Christianity illegal. I mean, they were killing Christians. The church went underground. This was years and years ago but the Christian church exploded. So just about 20 years ago, 25 years ago, a study was done and they wanted to find out how with all that persecution, all the deaths, all the warnings, how did the underground church in China grow like it did? I got chills thinking about it. What did they do? What was it? They trying to figure out what was the secret? So they interviewed the old pastors who were still living. They interviewed the, the adults that were children at the time. And they did all kinds of, they really researched it. Ooh, I get chills all over me. You want to know what the answer, they found the answer. You want to know the answer of why the underground church of China exploded amid, amongst persecution and death? They said the church prepared us. The church prepared us. Are you in a group of people that are preparing you to be thick-skinned? Are they preparing you for what to say and what when to be quiet? Are they what I really believe that the churches should be? We should gather together once a week or whatever and share our wounds and rejoice for our wounds, be encouraging each other and go back out and get it some more. Because we're representing our Christ. We're wanting to change the world. The thing is, the darkness of the world, they know they're in the darkness. That's why they're watching us so much. God forbid a Christian commit adultery or something at your job. Let's say, so, and you know what I'm talking about. Someone at your job steals some money or something like that. Not the first words. I thought they were a Christian and, and they went to jail. I, I thought, did you hear about that pastor? Uh, did you? They know right from wrong. They know they're in the darkness. The world is not tripping you. It's your teammates, supposed to be teammates. That's what you need to be prepared for. Those that are going to betray you, everyone's going to have a Judas experience. Have you thought about Judas when he left the Last Supper, when he left the room, that he left wet footprints on the floor? 
where his feet had just been wiped and washed. And he betrayed the master. We're going to be betrayed. We're going to be turned over. We're going to be told on. But God is our warrior. Look at some of the video and the pictures of what's going on in China. It's interesting because China's got a whole other heave coming. Look at the pictures. They take the beatings with honor. They take the imprisonment with honor. Here, oh, I don't understand it. I don't understand. I was just, I, I tithe every week. I don't understand why it was happening to me because I've been good. You need to understand this is our journey. Can you do without? Can you give it all? Can you lose it all? Can you trust? Can you stand out on the street and know that if they take your home or seize your bank account, that God will provide for you? That he'll take care of you? That he's going to hear your prayers on high? He's not going to say, get up off the floor. Get the sin out of your life. Then I'll hear you. Holy people, get the sin out of your lives. Get the sin out of your homes. Get the adultery away. Speak, speak the truth. One of the things that I pray with my family and when I speak, I pray that the words that I share land on fertile soil. Don't let my words just bounce or, or you feel good for a moment and then you guess what? You're going to share it with someone and they're going to kill it. What are you going to do? Uh, oh, I was excited. I guess you're right. No, be prepared ahead of time. Know ahead of time what being set apart is. We look different. We speak a different language. Our hope is different. Our joy is different. We're thankful for the scourging. We're thankful for the opportunity to speak to our captors. You ever thought about that? When Paul and Silas were singing, the chains broke, the gates opened. Guess what they did? They loved their captors. They told the message to their captors. There's always opportunity to witness and save the one that's doing the worst harm to you. Just wonder if you're ready or willing to see past your own pain, past your own discomfort, past your own circumstance of this hurt and this didn't feel good. I'm, I'm not comfortable. I don't get it. Let me tell you, stop looking at the mega churches. Stop looking at the mega pastors. Stop looking at the... The things of the world, the cars, the, the, the homes, the followers, the um, views on YouTube, the um, crowds in the stadium. Wide is the road to destruction. Listen, you got to know that Satan can also do false miracles. He can perform miracles. He can give the word. He can even masquerade as an angel of light. Don't look at the things that glitter because it's not all gold. It may, you know, there are times, and I, you know, I'm human. I'll look at something and say, wow, that was a great event. Phew. And for a split second, I'll think, wow. And that's human size. say, well, that was an awful big crowd. I'm like, no, it's not about that. It's not about how many. Remember when I've shared about the story of Billy Graham, when he went forward, the very last night of the crusade, on the very last song, on the very last verse, he went forward. And the evangelist, this is what's so amazing, the evangelist wrote in his diary, so discouraged. Only one person came forward, a boy named Billy Graham. Just one, just 12 apostles, just 120 in the upper room. But God, don't help me always be seeking for the one. May I be the one. May it be me. Stop looking to find the one so you can say you did it. So you evangelized. Be it. Be set apart. Be the Billy Graham. Be the Nelson Mandela. Be Samson. Be Gideon. Be Isaiah. Be the three Hebrew boys. Be David. Be Matthew. Be Mary Magdalene. These were all ordinary people, but they made an extraordinary decision. 
That's what being set apart is. Toughen up. Get with like-minded people who are ready to stand up and be holy. We have to. Open your eyes. It's not about waking up. Don't even say wake up anymore. Say open your eyes. Holy people, rise up. Thank you. I guess I'll, I'll, I just could keep going, but please open your eyes. Please clean the sin out of your home. That's the only way that we are going to make a change of what's coming to the United, to really several countries, but to United States. United States has the greatest burden about this issue of abortion. That in itself is, you know, we've got several issues that we as the holy people have to address. We've got vaccines. I mean, that's very serious. We're putting shots and fetal parts into our holy children, into our holy bodies that are temples of the Lord. There's things coming that we're going to have to speak up against. And there's going to be a squeeze. Are you ready? Are you ready that you might get taxed? Are you ready that you might lose your home? Are you ready that you might lose the title to your property? Are you ready that you might lose your job? Are you ready that you might be able to bu not be able to buy and sell? Are you ready that communication may be stopped? Are you, how are you going to make it? If we don't know who we are, if we are not connected, if we have not communicated, I want to tell you something the Lord gave me this morning. This was given to me about three years ago. Came to me plain as day this morning. I really believe we may have to start talking in code. There is so much censoring. So much censoring. Open your eyes. Open your eyes, holy people. And we say nothing, do nothing, because we don't want to lose nothing. That's bad English. So we sit back and we stay in our little clubs and we have a gossip session about someone that comes in and says, Hey, I have a message for you. Let's go. Rise up. I've sent here to tell you this. And they eat, ate me alive after I left the room. Hurt, but I'm okay. My skin's thick. God replaces that with people of love and joy that just randomly called me at the right time. Get up. First time, and I don't know how long, I really wanted to quit. Threw me for a loop because I admired them, looked highly of them. Okay, one last time I'm going to say I'm going to close. Um, maybe, maybe some of you have heard this, but the Lord gave me a vision um, several years back about Christianity. And I'm going to share this. And he said, Christianity, what I saw is like an ocean. Christianity is like being at the beach. There's some people that want to sit in the lawn chairs, very comfortable, getting the sun, enjoying the seagulls and the sound of the waves. They just want to sit in the chairs. Then there's people at the beach that like to walk along and get their feet wet and pick up seashells. And then there's people that want to get in the water to their knees. Then there's some that want to get up. And then there's some that maybe to, to their neck, but they don't want the water splashing in their face. And then there's those that are out in the deep water. Swimming with the dolphins. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, rise up. You're going to pass people that you never thought you would pass. You're going to want to talk to people and they're just going to not want to change. They're very comfortable where they are. And you just want to go, hello, uh, hello? Uh, we, we need to do, oh, I'm not comfortable with that. You know, I, I'm not into that. And I think, you know, the government, will, I, I just don't want to hear it. No, no, no. And, and then as you go, there'll be people that try to trip you as you go to the deep water. You may pass the pastor that brought you to the Lord. You may pass the pastor that you've sat under and listened to. And maybe people that have been very good to you during hard times in your life. It's not about have they been good to you. It's not about what they've done for you or the connection. That's the danger. Because listen... It doesn't matter how beautiful the plate of food looks if it's poison. You have to understand deception and how Satan works. He's going to do it through people you're connected with. It's going to be through people you've looked up to. It's going to be people that quote scripture to you. Just like Satan, he quotes scripture all the time. He tempted Jesus with scripture. He knows the word. And suddenly, instead of going to the deep water, you stop. Or you think, I'm not supposed to pass that person because I should submit. Or I'm not allowed to say that because they're an authority. And suddenly you get stopped from going to the deep water. Go to the deep water. 
The word says, seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open to you. If you're knocking on a door, it means there's a room. That means there's deeper revelations and deeper truths. Every day when I'm praying to the Lord, I say, I am seeking. I am knocking. Open something new that I didn't know yesterday. But he spoke in parables so that those who were seeking would hear it. He get, told us, knock and seek so that those who are wanting and hunger, hunger and thirst for righteousness, and you shall be filled knock and seek and he's going to open new truths to you keep going to the deep water don't worry about who you're passing it's going to hurt a little bit you might feel a twinge but be prepared ahead of time i'm preparing you excuse me understand you're going to pass people you never thought you'd pass you're going to have a deeper truth you never thought the person would not have but they don't want it and they're going to trip you they don't want you out there because you know what? It makes them exposed that they're not in the deep water. And then the Lord about a year ago gave me a new revelation about that. And when you're in the deep water, that's where the sharks are. Crazy. Just be prepared. Have your wetsuit on. Be prepared for the vultures. Be prepared for those that are going to bite at your heels. Be prepared for those that are going to alienate and abandon and accuse you. Be set apart believers. Have the courage to rise up. Have the courage to identify yourself as holy and don't look back. Run the race. Run the race and be prepared for who's going to stick their foot out and try to trip you. Be prepared for one who's going to say, change your uniform. You're not with us anymore. Keep going. Run naked. Lose it all. Give it all. Praise him. Make his light come through your broken vessel. He used broken people. He used sinners. He used adulterers. He used prostitutes. He used tax collectors. He used liars. He used stutterers. He used shy people. He used people that had bad eyesight. On and on we go. But something in our society makes us look at the person that looks so good, so smooth with their words, and they say it's so convincing. We just have some concern, and I want to caution you. Take it to the Lord. Seed 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 and they missed it and you went in a different direction i'm going to close with prayer <clears throat> before i pray share this video please and please go to holy nation and join holy nation and go to the website holynation.world and subscribe but please share this video. We're working hard. We have a goal of 5,000 people in that group. It's just going to probably be the only real goal that we have. And we're trying to get the word out. But I didn't want to say an announcement after I prayed. I want to end on prayer. So please share it and tell others about Holy Nation. And it's, I believe I'm going to be live Tuesday evening is usually when I'm on live. And I might start also being on Friday mornings. So let's pray. Dear God, I come to you covered in your son's blood in Jesus' name. And I praise you in your holy I pray, God, for this word and this encouragement to fill me and fill others. May it not just be something that splatters out on others, but, Lord, splatter it on me. May I feel conviction of your words as they come off my tongue. May they who are listening have fertile soil and it not be choked out in an hour or in a day or in a week. Toughen us, the holy people. Nowhere. In the story of your children, does it say that they were cowards? Nowhere does it say that they sat and covered their heads and just sat in a hole. They knew who they were. They knew who was with them. They knew what you are. They know of your power. Forgive us for being in our clubs and reading our book and discussing our quotes and discussing the history and discussing the designs and the plans. And we never have gone out and played the game because we're afraid to play the game because we get alienated. We get accused. We get abandoned. We get attacked. We lose a lot when we do that. So we just stay in the comfortable spot. And we're going to go right off the cliff. Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming on the world and on the church. And on the believers who've walked around with the title of believer and have done nothing. May it be holy people that rise up. Holy people that know their identity. Holy people that know who is with them, before them, behind them. Who speaks in the ear and says, go this way. Walk in it. 
The believe, I mean, the, the holy people who stand in situations and the God says, don't worry about what to say. I'm going to tell you at that right moment. Ordinary people making extraordinary decisions. Give us courage. Give us wisdom and discernment. Give us strong hides and tender hearts. Give us the courage to hear the rising up in us and not to snuff it out. And give us the courage to not let anyone, anyone snuff it out. May we have extra oil in our lamps burning. May there be extra time for us to be the example, even if we're out there running by ourselves and everybody points. But you know what? The ones in the front lead the charge. Prepare us for the words and the laughing and the rejection and the scoffing. Every single thing your son went through. Who are we to think we don't have to go through that? Toughen us. Prepare us. Convict us in our closets. That's where the change starts. Convict the holy people in the private room of their closet, of the secret place where we abide with you. But we can only abide with you if we are holy. Get up off the floor. Get the sin out of your life. Then run, run to the holy God who will refresh you and guide you and give you words and be with you and never, ever leave you. Don't ever be tempted by the sins of the world. Every single time the Israelites fell into sin, God stepped away every time. Every time they repented, he returned. Every time. May we return to holiness. May that be our mission. Not how many hear us. Not how many know us. How much fame we have. Not eloquent words. May we be holy. As you are holy. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.